We received some money from, it was over £4,000 from the Growing Communities Fund and this enabled us to find out what the people in the Deanfield area really thought about the Keneal Estate and the foreshore. So enable us to do this, what we did was we set up some drop-in sessions um, giving them food, um, enticing them to, to come along. And then we did a door-to-door -door survey. We went to two schools, uh, St Mary's Primary and Keneal Primary, because these were the feeder schools for the families of Dean Field. And we also went to Dean Court, where the elderly people uh, live, who had been residents of, of Dean Field, and they also uh, used the used uh, Dean Field, um, used Keneal as well. Well, when we went into the Dean Field area, we found that first the people were very receptive to our survey and they were enthusiastic about the possibilities for the Keneal estate and the foreshore. Um, some of the main things to come out are that people were interested in having more play facilities, especially if they could be linked to, to some kind of the heritage of the, of the estate and themed in such a way. Um, for the house to be restored, brought back to its original glory and for things to attract tourists to the, the two places so you'd, you know there'd be like a coffee shop and there's also the idea of a garden centre. I think it's a great opportunity for Bones because garden centres, immaterially where you go, they're always busy. So you'd like to see a garden centre? Mm -hmm. you... And a cafe. Because you'll get busloads of older folk coming in. That's right, most bone, bone you know, most bonies folk have never even been in the house. You know, if you if you go and meet folk in the town, uh, paintings, never heard of them, you know. And I think it, it's something worth keeping, you know, in the town. A lot of folk say, oh, blitz it down, but not. <laughs> you've, you've got to hold on a uh, heritage. And I keep saying, you know, the bridge into the estate and the bridge to the church must have been well built because I don't think they've ever been surveyed, have they, in years. And to me, that, that, that's a must. <laughs> yeah. When we lived at Keneal, if you got frost in the winter, we had no gas because the gas pipes all opened up along the avenue. That's a very good asset for the area. Yeah, it is. Uh, when you look at the history, you know, and the, the, when the aristocracy owned the place, uh, they had a lot of worth in it, you know. They didn't just own the place, they owned what was underneath it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, it's a, it's a grand place, I think. It's very well used. The walkers, a lot of dog walkers use it, of course. I use it a lot in the, in the foreshore. We've got a wee set of binoculars and I go down there and uh, try and see what kind of ducks is, you know, pretty shell ducks. I remember being at a thing in the library, a boy with the birds. Uh, he was taught with some of these birds come from the Barents Sea in Russia to winter in Keneal, uh, mud flats, you know. He says we look at that as a mud flat, but they look at it as a rich soup, you know, the birds. You know. 
But prior to that, it was a dismal looking place. There was always a smell of sulphur about the place. But, uh, then the Bing uh, was there. The, this Bing must have been about three or four hundred feet high. And uh, now it's spread about the town. The Scottish Development Department at that time uh, landscaped a lot, you know. And they made the island. Uh, that was originally meant to be not to be walked on because the birds uh, like to come ashore at high water and preen. In the middle of that there's a there's a lined pond. It's all overgrown. It looks well, but uh, originally it was uh, meant for the ducks to come ashore and preen. But now you can walk across it. There's a causeway across it. Um, and it didn't feel extended along the way, if you want, towards Canoe. So we, on the opposite side of our house, we had what they called Calder Park, right? Down below that you had the foreshore, the pit, another foreshore. And the way you got down to that was to go down the stealth steps. And when you got to the stealth steps, you were on what you would call the right-hand side of the, the bing. Right, and this is a place where we used to go for a wee swim because where we stayed in Cumloudon, we had coal fires, and it was a, a custom for the dads to maybe come off the night shift or whatever and come and get a bag and go up the bing and pick up a bag of coal, and we as sons would go down and have a wee swim in the water. That was going that side. Yeah. If you wanted to go to the other side, you had to go away along through Calder Park. The Channel Park, I don't know if you've heard of the Channel Park. And there were roads that took you, not proper roads, paths that took you down to the bottom, again to the to the pit area, but further along, where again you could go to the foreshore. And the water was always that wee bit warm, because obviously it was coming for underneath. I mean, the, the pit extended out, so obviously it was coming out. And it was great to, go, to do that, because you, I think if you wanted to swim, it's hot water was a bonus for you. Yeah, and that's how we did it. Yes, I did. I started in the pits and for the sharp pit. They all know the what local people would think is the modern pit, the, the brick built structure. But the old for the sharp pit. I started in there, and that was the right old fashioned pit, you know. It got its name because of the furnaces in that area at that time, you know. Mm -hmm. Made pig iron and things like that. But that was 1951, I think, I started there. And uh, that was the time where uh, the bing was here, as I said previously, quite a large bing. Instead of spreading the stuff, which we do today, they made this bing up because uh, the coal company wouldn't have paid the people to spread it, you know. They, they took it out on the studio because that land would have been all reclaimed, you know. But uh, it certainly looked different. I've got a photograph in the house uh, where it originally was. Uh, there was a bridge across the road, the main road going to Greysburg uh, for the snap pits across there. Uh, pithead baths, that was a, a blessing. And then they redeveloped what we recognise today as the new shafts, you know, the sunken new shafts, about mm -hmm. two or three thousand feet deep. A stupendous undertaking, uh, uh, what the bonus people don't appreciate, you know, what, what went on in the area, you know. The place was always there and it was always going to be there. And, and then uh, the events happened where the market went away for coal, actually, and then the Thatcher years uh, did a lot of damage with the traditional industries and the service economies, you know. But yeah, it's a lot of changes. Uh, again, much for the, for the better, I think. I enjoyed my working life. A lot of people didn't like the pits, but I enjoyed it, and I, I took an interest in various things, the geology of the place, and why why coal came to be there in the first place. You know, why did go all this trouble to dig a hole that depth to get it? Uh, the coal industry, when I started in the pits first, when I was a young man, 15, 
uh, there were six or seven thousand miners in Scotland in the Central Belt. So even in Bowen S, there's hardly a in the Central Belt, there's hardly a person without connections that worked there. But my great grandfather and my grandfather, they all had connections with the mining industry. So it was a very go ahead type of business at, at that time. Not in the decline, but uh, the place, uh, they made a good job of landscaping, you know. You can walk down there and now and you can stand on top of the shaft, it's sort of the cart, number one shaft, number two shaft. There's a concrete plug on it, but you realise there's two or three thousand feet below it. <laughs> yeah, you know, and uh, yes, it's a lot better now. This consultation pro uh, programme has been absolutely fantastic. The people of Deanfield area just opened their arms and welcomed the project worker and the, the members of the Friends of Kineo. The children were absolutely fantastic at school, so eager to tell us what their, their vision for, for the areas would be. Some were um, a bit pie in the sky, but uh, the main ones were, were fantastic ideas. So we have collated all this information and uh, put this, published this into a report. And with the report and the DVD, we hope to take this forward to the funders so that the funders then can see exactly what the people of Bones want for the Keneally estate and the foreshore. So it will not only benefit the Bones community, it will benefit the visitors too. It was a very positive experience for me. The people were friendly and receptive and enthusiastic, both at the events and at the door. Um, I was encouraged by the, the passion people had, the feeling for the estate and the foreshore. And I just hope that, you know, with this report, the investment can help some of those aspirations be realised. That would be, that would be really good.